when I think of fungi, I think of moisture. Because these guys are avascular, that means they don't they don't have an internal network for moving substances. Like we have blood vessels, plants have vascular tissue as well. And one of the the um, problems with being avascular is they kind of have to get their moisture straight into the cells. So that limits them a little bit. Another kind of strange thing about fungi is their morphology. That means shape. It can be so variable that the same species may look different depending on where it grows. Like let's look at this Psilocybe cubensis. This is the same species, all right? Just growing in different places. How do you know what it is? Well, hopefully you get it fresh and you can see it bruises blue. Long history of fungi, thousands of years. And still being used today for uh, various uses. I'll talk a little bit about that. Let's move on. Let's think about their diet. What do these guys eat? Well, I mentioned they have to absorb uh, materials right through their cells so they can be saprobic, meaning they feed on dead organic stuff like in the soil. Think of mushrooms. But unfortunately, some of these fungi are parasitic. They need a living host. If you ever had athlete's foot, that's a good example of a parasite. Now at the cellular level, their shape, they kind of have two ways they can be. They can have like a um, single cell, like yeast. This is under the microscope, of course. And they have this budding. That's how they develop. Or multi-celled structures. I tried to draw some budding right here. Uh, a thread-like cell is called hyphae. So you're going to hear the word hyphae in this lecture. So let's get it straight. It's just these thread-like cells. And they often occur in big masses. So the plural for hyphae is mycelium. Uh, here's bread mold under the microscope. Mm, doesn't look too yummy, huh? Well, let's dive into the groups because not all fungi are the same, right? Some, uh, such as the molds, the water molds, ooh, mycota, their spores have little swimming flagella. And so you can imagine these guys are in water. They infect plants a lot, and you'll see examples of this. Uh, if you look in your refrigerator at some of your vegetables that have been there for a couple weeks, you're going to see some slime, and that's probably a water mold, okay? Same with the toilet. Here it is under the microscope. But, pythiosis is spreading, all right? It used to be just dogs and cats, but humans are getting it more and more. It lives in war, warm, moist places with mild winters. I show rice fields here because um, we're seeing more and more of it. Uh, throughout areas that have mild winters, including uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, California, other parts of the world. And you know the surface ulcers may not look like much, I mentioned here, but they may be superficial to deep infection. And here's a good example. You know, it's, it's a sad example. This patient, if you look at the patient's right side, you can see the common iliac, internal iliac, has been destroyed. Okay, I think this is maybe a PET scan with contrast. Um, this this person's going to lose their leg, okay, the, um, due to a fungus. All right, so my point here is uh, fun, fungi can be pretty serious parasites. All right, on to a second group, the zygote-forming ones or zygomycota. These are busy little fungi. Think of bread mold. They have these gametangia, which is a, remember the word hyphae, thread-like cell? Well, they have these specialized, here in A, specialized hyphae that when they attach, it's like love at first sight, you know. And they're going to form a zygote. 
we call it the zygospore. And that's going to hatch into another one. So when you have bread mold, you got to understand what's happening on the surface is just part of the story. Because there's a lot happening deep in the bread. Okay, <laughs> you can't just toast it, you know. Um, you got to get it out of there. Because these spores are everywhere, even in outer space. You're probably covered in bread mold spores and you don't even know it right now. It's just, um, you open up a bag of bread and you, you figure it's been contaminated. Okay, you can't keep these guys from doing their job. Okay, mycosis, fungal infections. Everyone is going to get a mycosis at some point in their life. Okay, uh, sometimes you're not even sure what's going on. Rhizopus is the bread mold I talked about, but you know, if you take a deep breath of a bunch of bread mold, it can live in your lungs and cause pneumonia. Now, I don't want to worry you because a little bit of bread mold, we're, we're built for that. But if you have someone in the house that has low immunity, you know, a newborn or an elderly person, and you get that bread mold out of the house. You know, we can't treat it with antibiotics. Bread mold could care less about antibiotics. We have to use more uh, harsher treatments called fungicides. Right? And the problem with this is sometimes we don't know what's causing the pneumonia. And we put the patient on antibiotics, they come back, they're still sick. And then finally we take a sputum sample. We have them spit. And ah, we find these sporangia in the, the spittle. And then we go, aha. This is not a bacteria. It is a fungus. So then we put on a fungicide and that does a trick. A third group, Ascomycota, that just means sac, fungus. And they all form a sac for their reproduction. Right, a famous one, there's many famous ones, but Candida. It's known for causing a diaper rash, oral thrush, which is the mouth. You know, the tongue gets kind of whitish. Uh, yeast infections, right? Now, Candida loves warm, moist uh, skin surfaces. That's why a baby, sometimes, you know, a parent will just put the baby out in the backyard on a blanket and let the sun and the, and, and the wind dry their, their booty. And sometimes that really does a lot because if you remove their warm, moist environment, candida doesn't do so well. Women, sometimes if they're on antibiotics, what's happening is their beneficial bacteria are being destroyed. All right. That's one of the side effects of antibiotics is our good guys are killed off too. And that opens the door for a fungus. So sometimes women will take like a nice statin or some sort of uh, fungicidal um, treatment after antibiotics. This is kind of a cool story where a fungus provides a structure and it lives with an algae that provides energy through photosynthesis. Yeah. So these are called lichens. The old story is, you know, Freddy fungus provides a house and Alice algae provides the food and so they live in together in some symbiosis and they take a lichen to each other yeah I got it lichen okay all right uh, they do absorb toxins especially metals and so you won't see these sometimes in polluted cities go down to Los Angeles you won't see many lichens but uh, they're doing their job you know they're in, in areas trying to keep our air clean Basidia mycota that means club fungus, named for the basidio spores. All right, my spell checker doesn't like that word because, you know, it's not an everyday word, but these guys are everyday sorts of mushrooms because we eat them, and some of them are deadly. Like um, mycosis is disease and even death, and this is just a death angel. And I, I think I took this photo, maybe. Um, the death angel is one you, worth knowing because uh, sometimes local hospitals contact me and have me identify these guys because I mean, the toxin is unusual. It continually uh, circulates in the body and just gradually distorts the liver. 
So it's not always a fast acting toxin. White spores. Here's an annulus around the stalk and it has a basal sac too. So whenever they, the hospital delivers a mushroom, I ask them, please bring everything, even the basal uh, part. I need to see it. Need to see it. All right, we open up the story with that video of um, psilocybe cubensis, sometimes called psilocybe, the magic mushroom. There's different species of these guys used historically for vision quests. You know, it gets you into this altered state. I personally don't know. You know, I don't experiment with um, these kinds of things at all. But I read about them, and I've seen them a lot. Uh, people do bring them to me. One of the problems I mentioned is when they are dried you cannot see that blue staining reaction you cannot see the spore color so if someone was to hand you one of these like at a party i don't know i mentioned here bruise is blue so a dried one and this could be who knows what so you be careful out there all right molds nobody likes molds that i know of uh, there's many different types, and they even belong to different groups. Uh, the staky ball trees is the one that we sometimes see in homes where there's moisture. And some people don't know it, but they're like mold farmers. You know, they, they put away like uh, towels when they're still kind of wet, and maybe a, a dish rag sitting there, and they're growing mold. They don't check under their sinks. they got mold growing. And there is uh, mycotoxicosis. Toxicosis, hard word to say there. Myco means mushroom. Toxicosis happens when we breathe in large amounts of mold spores. All right, just like I mentioned earlier, it's not going to affect everybody, but large amounts, you know, that's the problem. Quantity. So try to keep this guy, sticky pot trees, out of your house if you can. All right, let's get to some good guys, beneficial ones, mycorrhizae. They have a connection with plants and help with the water gathering capabilities. Uh, we have antibiotics, such as penicillium. And related to the antibiotics, an amoxicillin, which is a derivative of penicillin. All right, so these interfere with the synthesis of cholesterol, which is something cool that medicine discovered and decided to apply it to statins. So statins have this HMG reductase inhibitor, so it suppresses the um, formation of cholesterol. So we think of Plavix, Lipitor. There's lots of trade names for these statins. And, and one of the problems with, you know, I didn't really talk about this, but the um, foam cells, they're going to form in the blood vessel lining. Oh, here's a nice picture of it, if I can get it. We want to avoid this. We want to avoid LDLs infiltrating the lining of our blood vessels. Now, when we're young, we think, oh, I'm going to live forever. But you're not, okay? Because if you're not careful, gradually your blood vessels are going to become occluded. That's called atherosclerosis. Here's the word. And it can lead to coronary heart disease. That's on the surface of the blood vessels. All right, so most people don't go on statins until they're in their 60s or 70s. Dermatophytes, I do not like this one, and I don't know anyone who does. Tinea pedis, think of foot, like a podiatrist. Athlete's foot. Now, it doesn't really belong to one group because there's different types of molds um, that do this, but, but this is one to, to take seriously because the uh, mold will go into the skin flakes. And so when you scratch, there's something called a scratch, scratch reflex. And people don't even know they're scratching. Right? They'll scratch at night, and it's just scratching like crazy. And you get these excoriations, which are basically open wounds. And then now we have a bacterial infection. And, you know, this is historically not uh, long ago. We didn't have as much athlete's foot as we do today because people went barefoot. So whenever you can, man, slip off those shoes. So you don't have this thing growing in your skin. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening.